Right, John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Amen. Boy, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be among God's people. Hallelujah. John 13. John 13. If you will, stand with us just one more time. We'll give you a break in a minute. Uh, in reverence and honor to God's Word, that's why we, that's why we do this. John 13, beginning in verse 1, and I want you to think on this thought this morning. Uh, I want you just to simply think on your purpose is serving. You need to write that down. That, that alone is a, uh, is a sermon in a sermon title. Your purpose is serving. John 13, the Bible says this, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come and that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and lay aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now go down to verse 12, if you will. So after he had washed their feet and had taken uh, his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now listen, those that double verily there is very important to study. When you see double verilies in Scripture, you need to look at it, write it down. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. <clears throat> if you know these things... Happy are ye if ye do them. <coughs> you may be seated. May God, <coughs> may God add the blessings to the reading of his word. I don't know what it is about age, but I've got to where I get choked not on big chunks of steak or baked potato or whatever. I get choked on my own air. I don't understand how that happens. But anyway, so your purpose is serving. Uh, this is that uh, beautiful passage of scripture where our Lord is washing his disciples' feet. Now, I want to make clear before I begin, just in way of a teaching moment here, uh, that there still are today, there are some churches that teach that, uh, that washing one another's feet is an ordinance of the church. But I want you to understand, it's not an ordinance of the church. And what Jesus was commanding us to do was not to literally wash one another's feet, but what he wanted us to do, he said, that's an example of how you serve one another. There's only two ordinances in the church, and both of those ordinances, to be an ordinance, an ordinance must uh, be a picture of the gospel. That's why there's only two. There's the Lord's Supper, and we have a picture of blood that was shed and a body was broken, and we do that uh, to, uh, showing his death until he comes, so we until he comes again, so we have the whole gospel. Baptism, it's a picture of the old man dying to his sins, coming to new life in Jesus Christ, so we see burial and resurrection. Uh, and so foot washing is not an ordinance, but it's an example uh, of how we are to serve one another. Now watch this. So your purpose is serving. Uh, so let me ask you this, and chances are there's somebody right now who this, you, you can answer this inside of your heart. Uh, and whatever age you are, you're uh, 8, 18, 28, 38, 58, 68. Uh, I wonder, inside of your heart of hearts, do you ever wonder why in the world you're here and what are you here for? Do you ever wonder that? Do you ever feel like, uh, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what my purpose is. 
I want to tell you this. Not knowing your purpose will cause people to jump from relationship to relationship. Uh, it will cause you to move from one hobby to another hobby to another hobby. Uh, it'll cause you to take an interest in this and then an interest in that. And it'll cause you to go to this place and travel to that place. And it'll cause you to do a lot of things because you're just trying to find fulfillment uh, and peace and happiness in this world and in everything that's around you. But what you're going to find out is, is how unfulfilled that things or even people can leave you in this life. See, God has intended on us to find contentment uh, and fulfillment in fulfilling our purpose that he sent us here for. And here's what our purpose is. Our purpose is to serve. And so imagine if you were just given a few days to live. Uh, I know several instances where somebody went to the doctor with just a little stomach pain, uh, went to the ER, and they found out that they were eat up with cancer, and literally a week later, they were dead. Uh, and so imagine this happened to you today, and the doctor said, look, you have probably only got three days to live, uh, maybe two days to live at most. Would you spend your time arguing and fighting over trivial things? Uh, would you spend your time uh, worrying about things such as what's in your 401k account, such as what's Wall Street doing, uh, such as did your neighbor mow over too far onto your side and he cuts his grass at two and a half and you cut your grass at three and a half? Would you spend your last three days worrying about the small stuff? Certainly not. Are you here this morning? Am I here this morning? Say amen. All right, just making sure. No, but what you would probably do when given a terminal diagnosis, just with relatively a few days to live, or let's say a few weeks to live, you're probably going to start working on your bucket list. Amen? Yeah, you know what your bucket list is. I learned this just a few years ago, and I've, I've shared this before, but uh, not many years ago, actually, but the girls were a little bit smaller, and they, they start, start talking about their bucket list. When I'm like, what is your bu- what's the bucket list? Like my ideal bucket list for the girls was they go get five-gallon buckets on Saturday mornings in spring of the year after I've plowed and, and tilled up the garden, and they pick up rocks and put them in that five-gallon bucket, and they haul it, and they dump, these, uh, dump it on the rock pile over in the wood line. Uh, and they didn't like it, but I loved it because I could run my tiller with ease through that uh, garden whenever they got done with that. So the bucket list, that's like the things you want to do before you die. I mean, that's like the things that you know you're, you're, you know you're dying and now you've been given a terminal diagnosis in this instant that we're reading about. And man, there's some things that you want to do, some places you want to go and things you want to see. My bucket list, my number one thing on my bucket list, I've got about three, but number one is I want to go to Guadalupe Island off the coast of Baja, Mexico and dive with great white sharks. Not free diving, don't get me wrong. You're in a shark cage. You leave San Diego, you take about a half a day boat trip down there, and you're there off Guadalupe Island for seven days. You get about two dives in the daytime and one dive at night. And to watch these creatures come by you, that some of them are big as a bus and weigh as much as a bus does. And that just puts me in awe to think that that is a creature that God has created that's upon this earth. That's amazing to think about. Well, what's on your bucket list? What's on the top of your list? Well, let me tell you something in this setting we find in the story here. We find that Jesus is in the upper room. This is on a Thursday night. I realize it's only John chapter 13, and we still have to go to John chapter 21 to get to the end of the story of the life of Jesus. But uh, it's John 13 is on Thursday night, and Jesus is eating with his disciples. He's talking and all of that. Jesus knows that he's about to go to the cross. He knows... Uh, that on that early, on, late on that Thursday night, early on that Friday morning, he's going to be arrested. He's going to be falsely accused. He's going to be mocked. He's going to be tried. He's going to be crucified on an old rugged cross. Uh, and he's going to be buried for three days. He knows he is hours from death. I want to tell you what Jesus puts on his bucket list. What Jesus put on his bucket list was serving those that he loved. My goodness. That's kind of a far cry from the generation in which we live, isn't it? He knows he's dying, and on the top of his bucket list is, I want to serve, and not only do I want to serve, 
but I want to wash my disciples' feet. Now keep in mind, this is the King of glory we're talking about. We're talking about God in flesh. Uh, We're speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation that's been sent down from God out of heaven for all of mankind. And what does he want to do just before he begins that death journey? He wants to get on his knees and he wants to serve. Now, I want to remind you, in, in, in those days, let's go back to the biblical setting. So in the biblical setting, remember that there were no... Uh, sewer systems. Uh, there were no septic tanks. Uh, there, there was none of that. There was also no code, no code enforcers. Uh, and, and so everything that was in the house that needed to come out of the house, it was thrown into the streets. That's everything from when you've used the bathroom to when you've washed the dishes sink or to when you've washed people's feet. It's thrown out into the street. And so when you're walking around, not wearing your Danner boots, but when you're walking around in your sandals of the day, everybody's sporting Tevas. When you're walking around, you're getting all that dust on your feet. You're going through, uh, you're going through water. You're going through all of that waste. You're getting all of that on your feet. And more than likely, these disciples, they had accessed this upper room, not from the interior of the home, but they accessed it from the exterior of the home, just like many of those homes all throughout Palestine and the Middle East still are today. Go to Afghanistan. You'll see what life is like 2,000 years ago in the time of Christ. But there's a little set of steps that run up the outside of the building that goes to a rooftop. And there you can access an upper room. And so they had not been through the interior of the room, the house where their feet had been washed and cleaned, but they they had come from the outside up, Uh, And they were sitting there, their feet had not been cleaned or washed. So Jesus was not kneeling down at manicured feet, pedicured feet. Let me get it right, ladies. Some of you men could have straightened me out on that, you know. If you do that, I hope you skip the nail polish. So your purpose today is to serve. We've got people running around today. And they're trying to figure out their purpose in life. And they're running from one thing to the next and one thing to the next and one person to the next and one purpose to the ne- uh, one person to the next. But listen to me. God's got a purpose for you and he's got a purpose for every single one of you. But here's what it is. God's purpose for you is to serve. It is to serve. And how do we serve? We serve through the local church. But I want to show you a couple of things that we find in, in Scripture as we start looking through this Scripture and we start thinking about what the Lord has said. I want you to notice in verse number 4, he said, the Bible says this, that he that he riseth from supper, and he laid aside his garments. He, 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 He rose up, he laid aside his garments. I want to tell you something that you need to know about serving and fulfilling your purpose in life. One of the things that you have to do is, is you have to lay aside yourself and your wants and your motives to serve others. So write this down, number one. Number one, remember this. Selfish people do not serve. Selfish people do not serve. And I want you to understand something. We as a church, we have created this church environment today all across America. And and there's books written about this and seminaries teaching this kind of junk. But we have created this church environment in America where uh, where we have set up this ideology in a a man-made theology that says... If you will come here, we are going to feed you. We're going to cater to your needs and cater to your wants. You want a pedicure? We'll give you a pedicure. We'll put polish on if you want polish on. We've created this church environment uh, where an attitude from the world has crept into the church uh, and we come to church and we're just wanting to get, we're wanting to receive, we're wanting to uh, let it be all about me. What do you have to offer me, give me, bring to me, feed me, make me full, make me happy, and let me leave with a smile? And I want you to understand something. That's not what God said our purpose is. The Bible says our purpose is to serve. And selfish people don't serve. See, selfish people want to pull up to the table and they want to be fed, but they don't want to give anything in return. 
Selfish people, they want every song sung that just pleases them in a style and in a way that pleases them. They want the sermon to be just in their manner of preaching or teaching. And they want any kind of activities the church is doing to be something that caters to them. That's selfish people. But I want you to mark it down, number one. Selfish people don't serve. They don't give. They don't hand out. They don't extend help. They don't serve in any way. Selfish people don't serve. And listen, gone are the days in our society anymore. And if you're a new parent, you write this down and mark it down because I believe it's great parenting advice we find really from the life of our Lord and from the teachings of Scripture. But gone are the days when our kids are given chores and responsibilities. Has anybody ever heard of chores? Has anybody ever had to do chores at your house? I remember counseling with a couple one time many, many years ago, and they were a very volatile couple. A lot of stress, a lot of tension in this, this relationship. Uh, and, and I remember, I met with them a couple of times, but um, I, I remember the wife speaking and she said, listen, she said, I'm so frustrated and I'm so mad and I'm so angry because she says I work hard all week long. And she said on Saturday, she said, I have got to get up and I've got to clean from dusk until dark. And she said, he's never home all weekend long. Uh, She said he's out with his buddies doing whatever, wherever, whenever. He never helps one single bit around the house. She said he eats. He piles a sink full of dirty dishes. And she said then I go to my 16-year-old daughter's room and she said literally there are clothes piled up to the knees in that room. And she said her room is filthy. She said it takes me several hours just cleaning up in her room. I said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 stop. We're talking about your 16-year-old daughter's room. And and, and did you say you go in there and you spend several hours cleaning in that 16-year-old daughter's room? And she confirmed all of that. And and, and I said, listen, my girls are 9 and 11 or 12, whatever age they were at the time, maybe younger. And and I said, listen, they they wash dishes. We didn't have a dishwasher. I said, they wash dishes. Uh, They run a vacuum cleaner. Uh, They clean their room. They make their bed. They bring their dirty clothes to the laundry. Uh, and, and you can take a lot of stress off yourself uh, if you would start teaching your daughter some responsibility. Because listen to what we're going to do. Because if we don't teach our children responsibility and we don't give them some chores and responsibility, if we don't do that, then we're raising another generation who thinks life is all about feeding them, taking care of them, meeting their needs, and never reaching out and serving someone else. You with me? I thank the six of you that are. And so we got a generation today that just wants to be fed, wants to be fed. But listen to me, your purpose is to serve. And you're running around trying to figure out why you feel so unfulfilled inside. There's a reason why uh, that a whole barn full of stuff leaves you without fulfillment and without contentment. There's a reason why a great old big brand new house, once the excitement of getting in it and building it's over with, you step back and you're like, that really is doing nothing for me on the inside. There's a reason why that big brand new truck or big motorcycle or big boat or whatever the case may be, There's a reason why that in the end, none of that stuff brings you fulfillment or contentment. And here's what it is. It's because your purpose is to serve. You want to be content? You want to feel fulfilled? You want to be fulfilled in life? You want to know the peace of God that passes all understanding? Uh, Then step into your purpose today and realize that your purpose is to serve the Master. Selfish people don't serve. I'll tell you somebody else that doesn't serve either. It's people with excuses doesn't serve. People with excuses don't serve. So the reality is this. If we want to serve the Lord, if we really want to serve the Lord, we'll find a way to serve the Lord. I'm surprised. I'm often surprised how people don't come on Sundays for all kinds of trivial reasons. And they feel like they have to come give an account to me and get some kind of excuse note for not being here on Sundays. But I don't care. Like if God's okay with you skipping out and going and doing whatever, hey, listen, I'm fine with it too. But, but I'm always amazed that the excuses that some people will come up with just not to even come to church. 
and the excuses that people have not to serve. We see, we see, excuses always finds a way to skip out on serving the Lord. I remember one day I was preaching a message along something like this, and I made the statement. And I think I've told you this before, but I made the statement. I said, listen, I said, I want to do anything to serve him. I said, if they see bubble gum stuck in the car- carpet right back there, I said, I'd be willing to get on my hands and knees and get that carpet out of the bubble gum. And God knows this is the truth. As soon as the service was over with and everybody left the church, and there's about three or four or five of us left, we started walking out. About three quarters of the way back, right in the middle of the aisle, there's a piece of bubble gum that had been freshly squished into the carpet. And before I got to lunch that day, guess where I found myself? On my hands and knees trying to get bubble gum out of the carpet. I still think some, some old grouch in the church said, okay, preacher, you're going to say that? I'm going to see if you mean it. <laughs> and they cut me off on this side and sent me down that side, and I found the bubble gum in the carpet. But listen, those with excuses, they never serve either. And one, one of these days, our excuses is going to be over with. They're going to be over with. I had a man come to me one Sunday morning, and he said, Man, this, uh, listen, when this, when this guy comes to church, he's on fire, but I never knew when he was going to come to church. He's like, I don't even know when he'd show up. He was like the wind or, or whatever. And he came to me and said, I want to do something. I want to do something. I want to do something. Give me something to do. I want to serve the Lord. And I, and I want to say, well, first off, you can just come. Let us know you're going to be here, uh, and then we'll try to find a place for you to serve. I didn't say that. I was loving, and, and I said, okay. I said, I said, what do you want to do? Well, I don't know, but I just want to do something. And then I started, I knew a lot of stuff that needed to be done. I said, okay, well, we need kind of somebody over in this area. No, I, I don't really want to do that. I said, well, we need somebody in this area over here. No, I, I don't want to do that either. And, and, and I said, well, what about this? And, well, I can't do that because of this. I said, what about that? And I said, well, I can't do that because of that. And I'm thinking, what do you want to do? You just want to have excuses or you want to get up and you just want to do something? Man, listen, there's opportunities at Liberty to serve in so many ways. We've got so many ministries. And listen, you will bounce around in life. Mark this down. You're going to go from here and there trying to find fulfillment and contentment and peace in life. And you're going to find out that nothing in this world will do that for you except serving the Master that saved you and give you everlasting life. See, Jesus, and he instructs us to do this, but when he instructs us to do this, he sees the greater purpose in us washing one another's feet because he realizes that in washing one another's feet or serving one another, whatever capacity that is, he realizes that ultimately it's not that we're really serving one another, but ultimately by serving one another, we're serving him. And that's what he desires out of his children. He wants this mentality to be created within our lives, within our mind, and within our heart, and within our church. He wants us to have this mentality that life in the church is not all about me and catering to my needs. He wants us to have this mentality where we need to realize, look, it's not about me sliding up to a table and being fed. He wants us to have this mentality that says, I don't care whether I'm fed or not, I'm here to serve. I don't care if anything's about me. I'm just here to serve. I don't care if I get what I want. I don't care even if I get what I need. My purpose in life is to serve. But now watch this. In serving, watch, you're not going to understand this. This is a heavenly principle. It makes absolutely no worldly sense at all. But in serving, you're going to find out that you get fed. In serving, you're going to find out that you get your needs met. In serving, you're going to find out that the Holy Spirit of God is going to cater to the needs that you have deep down inside of you. In serving, when you walk into your purpose serving, you're going to find out that surely goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Are you with me? Say amen. I want you to know this too, lastly. Number three, critical people don't serve. Critical people don't serve. You know critical people, and I'm glad there's none here today. But you know critical people. They kind of growl about this and growl about that. And they're always making phone calls. But watch this. And this is, a, this is, this is one for our, anybody in church leadership to write down and note. The next time a critical person comes to you, ask yourself as you're talking to that critical individual, what are they really doing at the church? And where do they serve at the church? 
Because here's the thing. If you're busy serving, you don't have time to be critical. If you're busy serving, you don't have time to bellyache and complain. If you're busy serving, you don't have time for growls. But if you're busy serving, the thing that's on your mind is, is where can I serve next? What can I do next? Where can I go next to extend a hand? How can I give out? How can I satisfy? How can I bring uh, relief to somebody that is in need? And so your purpose is to serve. Girls, you come, whoever's got the invitation. Let me ask those three of our deacons to come up here. So there's somebody in this church today, listen to me, and, and the quicker you get this, the, the, the quicker you get this, the sooner you stop wasting your life, the quicker you get this. See, you're going to live through your 20s, you're going to live into your 30s, you're going to live into your 40s. Don't let it be once you're broken down and getting old that you start really thinking about, what am I here for? What good have I done in this life? What's my purpose? I have no purpose. Figure this out now and get this inside of you, that your purpose is to serve. Psalmist David, I think it's much greater than something in the distant future when he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Literally, that, that word dwell there, it refers to his service in the house of the Lord. And the psalmist David was saying, I know that in serving, there is goodness that will come to me. And I know that in serving, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm going to tell you something. I had some... I had some old people in my life, some old timers. And from watching, some of them still alive and most of them's not. But when I look at their life, I see how that their lives were given serving other people. Their lives were not given amassing wealth or amassing lots of property and possessions and all of this. And they may have had some of those things. But their lives were giving to serve each other. They give their life. Because our Lord said, listen, this is my example. Do what you see me doing. And it's not that he wanted you to literally wash people's feet. But he, he, what he wanted you to do is to see how lowly he was willing to kneel. And to bow down and serve somebody else. Now watch this one second, very quickly. The nail biter and all this for, for me in this story. Watch, stay with me. You've got to catch this. I hope you see how he was willing to serve. It's just so humbling for me to think that, that Jesus, and I mean he's Lord. You don't have to acknowledge him as Lord. You don't have to recognize him as Lord in your life. You, you don't have to recognize his deity, his holiness, his purity, his greatness, his might. Because it doesn't matter what you recognize Him as. He is Lord. And He is mighty. And He is holy. And He is God. And so here is God in flesh who the disciples should have been falling around His feet and worshiping Him and washing His feet. And by the example they had been given from the woman who broke her alabaster box. But here's Jesus kneeling down. Here's the nail biter. Twelve disciples that sat at that table that night. One he knows is going to betray him. Sell him out. Thirty pieces of silver. One, his closest friend in the whole world, was going to curse and deny that he ever even knew the man. But Jesus gets up and he takes the twelve. And he washes the feet of 12. If it had been me, I think I'd have said, everybody come over here and sit down except Judas and Peter. Or everybody come over here and sit down except Judas. Because I ain't helping that fool out for anything. I think if it had been me, I'd have set Judas down and probably reached up to wash his feet and I'd have snapped that ankle right in two. I'm just being real. Just being me. No, Jesus set the twelve down. 
And he got down on his knees in front of the twelve. And he began to wash his disciples' feet. This is Jesus I'm speaking of. He's, he's on his way to the cross. He's about to be arrested. He's about to be mocked. He's about to be cursed. Suffer. Ridiculed. Not because he did something wrong. Not because he deserved it. He was perfect. But he was doing all that because he loved me and he loved you. And in his final hours, you know what he did? He said, I've come to serve. I've come to serve. And you're sitting here, you're wandering around wondering, what in the world am I here for? Jesus wants you to serve. He gives you this example. It looks something like this. Girls. Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of my ways. Please help me change. I'm too wrapped up in myself. And I know I'm to blame I've been too busy Getting ahead When I should be out there With those who should be fed And Lord, that's why I say And I need to be What good is the truth if I don't put it to use? That's why I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to give, Lord. I'm willing to hurt. Take this broken piece of clay and begin to mold now here's my heart and my mind my body and soul I'm coming out of my comfort zone so with my everything oh Lord I'm ready to serve are called but few are chosen and it's time that we the children of the light take this message to somebody where are you serving today blind in the night. are you living in your purpose today instead of running oh, Jesus and hiding, dying moments his dying hours. And Lord, he, he gets on his knees with the gospel in our people hands. he loves. Their feet. Lord, forgive our Isn't it time we stop being selfish? Stop having excuses. To do Just find somewhere to serve. 